Hi and welcome to this quick review of the structure, isomerism and naming of alkenes. Obviously please make sure you've got your independent study materials in your notes to use alongside this clip. Um, and what we'll look at is the nature of the carbon-carbon double bond, how geometrical isomerism arises around this bond and how we can apply the can ingold prelog naming system in alkenes. So the carbon-carbon double bond is the main functional group in alkenes which gives them their chemistry and it also gives them their isomerism. So if we take a diagram that represents uh, what happens during the formation of a carbon-carbon double bond that I've uh, imported and put on the left, what I'll try and do is explain the stages of that diagram, what it actually means. So if we start um, with looking at ethene, the simplest alkene, um, all the bonds that are indicated by red arrows are called sigma bonds. This means they're composed of a head-on overlap of orbitals between the atoms. So I've changed one of the bonds, the main one, between the carbon and the carbon atoms uh, into a, an overlap of orbitals between the two atoms, just to illustrate what I'm trying to say here. So the, orbit, the orbital overlap bit in the middle is the sigma bond. So taking the fourth outer shell electron on each carbon atom, because you can see each carbon atom has three bonds already, this fourth electron is in a p orbital which sits perpendicular to the plane of the sigma bond between the carbon atoms. So both of the blue arrows represent one p orbital containing one electron, because if you remember, a p orbital has a figure of eight shape. So the sigma bond draws the carbon atoms closer together so the p orbitals overlap sideways and it's drawn as these two shapes. So the two um, indicated purple areas represent the sideways overlap of the p orbitals and this is how you should draw it in an exam if you're asked to draw this in a question. So the key structural features of the carbon-carbon um, double bond is it's a uh, planar, there's 120 degree bond angles throughout and all bonds are um, adopting a trigonal planar shape around the carbon-carbon double bond to minimise electron pair repulsion. So this resulting overlap of the p orbitals is called a pi bond and it's actually a bit weaker than a sigma bond. So the two sideways overlaps of the pi orbitals is called a pi bond. So if you carefully hold two fingers with the other hand and try to rotate them, it's not possible is it? This effect happens between the carbon atoms in a carbon-carbon double bond and like I've labelled you can't rotate the carbon-carbon double bond without breaking the pi bond that we've just made. So this means that you get something called geometrical isomerism in alkenes. So this compound, for example, is called but2-ene. So it's called but2-ene because there are four carbons in the longest carbon chain and the carbon-carbon double bond starts at carbon number two, like you can clearly see. So using the same logic, you could argue that this compound could be called but2-ene as well. But clearly they're different, you can see that from where the H3C or CH3 groups have been placed. And because of the restriction of the carbon-carbon bond rotation, you can't simply rotate that bond so that they are orientated the way they were before. You can't convert in or interconvert between the two. So therefore these two compounds are geometrical isomers of one another. So this particular version has the two identical groups on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So it's known as the cis isomer, for example, cis butatuene. This version has the two identical groups on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond. So this version is called the trans version, e.g. trans butatuene. Now this version it's uh, still an isomer of the other two, but it's not a geometrical isomer because two identical groups are attached to the same carbon atom 
on the carbon-carbon double bond. And the name of this is methylpropene. So you'll notice I've underlined um, part of my explanation on the left-hand side. So they often ask about this in exams. I've underlined um, part of my explanation because that's how you need to say it in exams to be absolutely clear to the examiner that you know what you're talking about. Um, for some reason, lots of people struggle with how to word this when they first start attempting exam questions on, on this particular aspect of alkenes. So it might be worth uh, taking note of how to actually put it into words uh, effectively and cleanly so that you get the marks at, at the time. So the cis transnaming system we've just looked at has one major limitation. It depends on two identical groups somewhere on the carbon-carbon double bond. So I'm going to change the groups around my carbon-carbon double bond uh, to try and identify and illustrate to you why this is a problem. So now we've got uh, four different groups around the carbon-carbon bond, carbon-carbon double bond. So what do we do? So this is where the um, can engel prelog naming system has superseded the cis-trans naming system. So it doesn't matter which side we start on. It could be the left-hand side, it could be the right-hand side. I'm going to start with the left-hand side. We assign priority based on the atomic number of the atom bonded to the carbon. So if we assign atomic number 1 to hydrogen and atomic number 6 to carbon, carbon has the higher atomic number. So that means that the hydrogen has lower priority as a group and the ethyl group has higher priority as a group. So we now apply the same idea on the other side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So looking at the uh, atomic numbers, you've got 6 for carbon and 17 for chlorine. So we can do the same thing here as well. So the same priority groups are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So this is called the Z isomer. If the same priority groups are on the different sides of the carbon-carbon double bond, this would be the E isomer. So the name of this particular compound you see on the screen is Z2-chloropent2-ene. I've highlighted the carbons and uh, numbered them uh, so you can see why it's, uh, it's named in that particular way. There is one other twist to the CIP naming system that we need to be aware of. If I change one of the groups here so that both atoms are atomic number 6, that is the atoms that are bonded to the carbon in the carbon-carbon double bond, what we do now is look at the point of difference. So what you do is you work your way outwards until you come to a point of difference between the two chains. So moving outwards to the second carbon along, still both atoms are atomic number 6. But if we look closely, Attached to that carbon, you don't quite have the same um, set of atoms. On the top group, you have a chlorine atom attached to that carbon. On the bottom group, you only have hydrogen atoms attached to that carbon. So that chlorine atom takes atomic number 17, whereas the hydrogen atom is only atomic number 1. This could therefore be classified as a point of difference. So clearly, because at that point of difference, the group that is in purple uh, has an, uh, an atom that has uh, atomic number 17, which is higher than atomic number 1. The higher priority group is on the top left. So this compound will be called E25-dichloro-3-ethylpent2-ene. Let me try and explain this mouthful. So it's the E isomer because the same priority groups are diagonally opposite each other. The position of the carbon-carbon double bond dictates the number next to the um, ene part of the name, hence the 2-ene. It's a pentene because there are five carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. There's a chlorine atom at positions 2 and 5. There's an ethyl group at position 3, so 3-ethyl. 
and C comes before E alphabetically, so chlorines are mentioned before ethyl in the name. So it's fair to say that I made this one deliberately hard, and it's also fair to say that you're very unlikely to get one um, quite like this in an exam. But it just goes to illustrate it's a good idea to now go and find some examples and practice them before going any further with alkenes. So with that in mind, uh, thank you for listening, thanks for your time, and uh, in the meantime, take care and see you soon.